relax, recharge, repeat. But uh, this is not how it works anymore. It is now powered and unplugged. Yeah, off-grid power system from Delaware, Ohio have a new logo. Slight change in the logo, same great service. Guys, welcome back to the off-grid garage here in... Well, you won't believe it. We have... Um, we had some rain last night and have now some clouds. We just had 110 amps when the sun is coming through these gaps. Look how fast the clouds are moving. It's crazy. But there's more rain coming from the west. Yeah, why is the rain coming from the outback? Sun is just coming out. We've got 120 amps outside. Isn't that crazy? Guys, our friend Ed Jones has done it again. You may remember our friend Ed when we built this Powerwall 2.0 or 2.1 or 2.11, what it's called now. He already donated a Victron Serbo 3X, so we could test all the communication with the BMSs because this device has a CAN communication port and pretty much talks to all the BMSs we have here in the off-grid garage. And we have done a lot of testing with this device, a lot, and learned so much, right? He was so very kind to donate a Victron EV charging station to the off-grid garage here. So we can test this, review it and learn how this station works, how it integrates into the Victron ecosystem. And um, let me tell you, I have read and watched a couple of videos about these charging stations and it seems like there are quite a few challenges and problems with this charging station. So I was really keen to get one myself here to find out what's actually going on, to test everything, do a bit of deep dive, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I've got this station here sitting in the garage for a couple of months now. Some of you have already spotted it in the corner and left some comments about the Victron charging stations, right? But just in a few days, the Sparky will come out and do some electrical work here on the solar system. And there's hopefully enough time to install this charging station and also the Tesla wall charging station for my car. Because, um, yeah, we are a two electric vehicle household now. It's a bit dark in here. This is the Great Wall Motor Aura or Good Cat, Funky Cat, how it's called in other countries. And this is really a fantastic car from many perspectives. And um, I'll tell you more about this later when we test this charging station. Because I made the decision to install these Victron charging stations in the big shed over there to charge the Aura. Because um, apparently this charging station gives you a bit more control over how the car is charging. While in the Model 3 I can manage everything through the app and can change the charging power, the charging speed, charging time. And most of this should be available through the Victron charging station as well for the Aura. So let's see and find out. Okay, so before we get this charging station installed here, I want to have a look inside or we want to have a look inside and see what components we can find, what we can learn already from the design of the electronics. So I guess this will be rather a quick and short video here, starting with the Victron EV charging station. So really the first thing I noticed when looking at this charging station is there are no external screws anywhere. Once this thing is mounted on the wall, you cannot open it anymore unless you take the full station off the wall. You've got these four mounting points to hold the charging station on the wall. And if you turn it around, you can see these many holes here. I've already removed a whole bunch of screws and this gives you access to the charging station. There you go. But all the electronics and the connection terminals are inside this um, lid. The first thought was, how do you install this charging station? Because you cannot mount it to the wall and then connect your cables. This is a two-person job then. Someone has to hold the charging stations while you feed in the cable, connect them to the terminal here. And then you have to close the lid, put all these screws back in and then mount the charging station, including the cable, to your wall. And afterwards, you have to connect your cable to your supply. So, there's a bit of a design flaw, I would say, already. Yeah, so we've got the cable entrance here at the bottom. There is no other possibility to get the cable in. We've got a three-phase connection, neutral and ground. The station can be either operated via single phase or three phase. I think a uh, single phase 7.4 kilowatts and three phase up to 22 kilowatts then. Woo, that is fast. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if people actually need this at home. So the next thing we found is this huge contactor here. Yeah, it's a four pole contact. So all three faces plus the neutral will be connected or disconnected. 400 volt three phase up to 26 kilowatt or 40 amps. That is a huge contactor. Wow. So we've got the input of the power at the bottom of the contactor. We've got this probably six mil cable and each of the active faces goes through a current transformer here on the main PCB. And then these three active phases, including the neutral, goes through another CT, through another current transformer. And I believe this is only for safety reasons. So obviously, if you have a ground fault with one of your cables here, the sum of the current going in and out of your vehicle is not the same anymore. The electronic will realize this and disconnect the contactor. So this acts a bit like an RCD function and is purely for safety purposes, I would say. Yeah, and then we've got this main PCB here. And interestingly, this is actually powered by an ESP32 room. It's the same chip as on the Peter boards. And we have another we have another PCB down there. This is for the touch display on the front. We've got a Wi-Fi antenna connected directly to the chip and it sits up here in the top of the charging station. Then we've got several connection cables on this side. One goes to the PCB carrying the display and the other one goes to um, this construct, which is an LED ring. Now yeah, this charging station has this white LED ring, which can be fully programmed. I believe these are RGB LEDs and they can show the state of your charging session. For example, if the car is charging or if it is fully charged, if there's a fault, if it is on standby, all this kind of stuff. And this can be set up in the software. We will have a look at this once this station is installed. And we have some smaller relays on here. One of them is actually switching the large contactor. And we also have this wider connector here. So that's the connection to measure the voltage. And these current transformers are measuring the current. And here in the PCB, we can clearly see the isolation between the high voltage side, the 230 volt side, and the low voltage side operating the controller board. Yeah, the PCB is actually this slot and only these components here are bridging from one side to the other side. And then I was wondering why there is a 3.5 millimeter jack here in the bottom to connect a speaker or something. But then looking inside, it's actually not a contact or a port or something. This is just a hose. This is only if there's any water collecting in the type two connector from the outside. So the water will go down this hose and then drain at the bottom of the case. Yeah, so there you have it. That's the first look at the Victron EV charging station. I'm waiting for this one for quite some time now. And when they came out here in Australia, they were like $2,200 or something. So super expensive. But now they have come down to around $900, which is in line with the European price now at about 600 euros. Yeah, and as I said, um, I have read about this charging station. I also watched a couple of videos. There are obviously some issues with this charging station, more over with the uh, software of it. So and I would really like to find out if these problems still persist or if Victron has finally addressed these issues and fixed them all with a firmware update. Yeah, as all the other Victron products, this one is fully over the air upgradable. You will get frequent updates for this device, not only bug fixes, but also new features and functions. Yeah, and obviously it comes with this 4.3 inch touch display here at the top where you can just stop charging, start charging. You can even have a slider to change the charging speed, which will be very handy for the GWM Aura because you cannot adjust it inside the car. The Aura takes all the power it can get from the charging station. It always maxes out the charging stations up to three phase and 11 kilowatts. And especially here going off grid, we need to be able to adjust and control certain loads here on our network. And hence the decision to install this one here for my wife's car. And I will use the Tesla wall charger because I can adjust it with the app anyway. So very exciting that the Sparky finally comes out and does some more work here on the solar and off-grid system. It will be very interesting to watch him. Really looking forward to it. And this will be another big step in taking the whole property off-grid. So stay tuned for more updates about this. Okay guys, so far this video from today, it's a very short video, right? <laughs> Unusually short. Thank you so much for watching and thanks um, Mr. Ed Jones from Off-Grid Power Systems in Delaware, Ohio. Victron dealer, have a look on his website. What is it called? Offgridps.com. If you are in North America and want to buy Victron gear, 
well, this is the place to be. And also mention my name and that you have seen the video here on my channel. So maybe it gives you a bit of a discount. I don't know. And the daily subscriber count and update. Ooh, we've got a round number and I think I've got all the numbers here. Okay, I need to take these ones away. Zero, zero, three. Thank you so much for all these wonderful and beautiful people who are donating to the channel here, buying me a beer from time to time or becoming a member to the channel. I sometimes drop some photos and extra videos for them just to say a personal thank you to them. And also welcome to all the new subscribers here on the channel. Amazing. 92,300 subscribers. That is mind blowing. And of course, thank you very much to Ed again for sending over this charging station here so we can all learn more about it. Thank you very much for all your support. And as you know, it makes these videos here possible. Until the next video, guys, when we do something, I don't know, maybe the Sparky video comes next and or we do something completely different again. Well, we will see. Until then, guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye.